Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the CCL 2021. We have officially made it to Split 2. My name is Morgan Dunn. I am joined by the lovely Mick, and we kick things off with a Southwest matchup between UTD Cod Orange and OU Crimson. Mick, how are you feeling, my man? I'm feeling great, man. I'm happy to be here. I'm so excited Split 2 is here now, and every single matchup from this point forward, I'm hoping to be super close, super tense, and just ready for all these guys to duke it out. Yeah, and it's looking like we got a good one here to kick things off. To kind of break things down, there is a slight difference from last week and how the records in Split 2 are looking. I know some players were confused. If you're a fan looking at this, you might be a little confused, so I'll kind of run down how it is. If you go on to the College Cod website, which you should just have bookmarked at this point, collegecod.com, go check it out. If you run over there, if you look at the league, if you look at the standings for Split 2, all of these two Teams already have five games played. You're like, whoa, that seems a bit mistaken. Split two just started. Those are the records from split one against the other teams. They are, they are now stacked up against. That way, teams like, say, an OSU Scarlet that completely ran the table, they still have a little bit of an edge over the rest of their uh, opponents. So that's kind of how that works out. That means at the end of the split, you'll have the best of the best at the top. You'll have the guys kind of sitting on the edge near the bottom. But what matters is if you made the top cut at a split one, you are guaranteed yourself to be up at that top cut when it is all said and done. Looking forward, though, to this matchup here right now. It is going to be UTD Cod versus OU Crimson, as I said. And TD has been on a tear thus far. They are 10-0 and 0 for themselves. Yeah, and overall, these guys, especially looking at either you and I talked about it beforehand, even hopping into the cast, about how these guys have such a solid overall roster. I mean, you even can bring in a sub, and if he overall can contend and have two guys who can interchange and just flawlessly mix as a team overall, I mean, that's super impressive. Just to sit there and have a guy, I mean, we got teams out here who are struggling to find a roster as is, and I mean, you got the rights of Nate and, you know, Catalyst, and they're just going insane as it is overall. I mean, just shows how well of a team these guys are prepared-wise and just as a whole roster to be able to continue themselves across the league and across just the whole series and allow to themselves to put themselves in a position where they can just dominate regardless of the mode that's being thrown at them. So overall, just awesome to sit there and see these guys performing that. And especially going forward and with these map setups we got, I'm super excited to see how they perform in it. Yeah, and speaking about those map sets today, we're going to be kicking things off on Raid. And if you're a guy that likes Raid, you're going to be very happy. Both our first and final matchups of the evening are going to have Raid three times. Maps one, three, and five. On this one here, though, the SND map two is going to take us over to Moscow. And then if required, the map four is on Crossroads. That's actually the only one of these maps that are about to get taken out of competitive that we will see see today crossroads getting swapped out for apocalypse after this wednesday are you excited for that are you excited to go back to some more of the classic maps i am so dude you have no idea how excited i am for this i just i mean overall i gotta say i love what cold war is doing i love the maps that they've created overall i just feel like crossroads doesn't have that good of a feel to it in terms of the flow and just how gunfights play out on there and i'm super excited for how apocalypse is going to come in and take that rotation over and just out of find a whole new way for maps to flow and especially create a lot more momentum when it comes to the whole mode because i mean sometimes teams may be felt like they're forced into a situation where it's like oh well they ban this well we got to ban this because we're not that good at it so it looks like we're stuck with crossroads but i mean you can't really complain about apocalypse i mean overall it's just a great feeling map and i know uh also going forward we're also switching out s and d as well and we're getting rid of what i believe is going to be um Oh, Garrison. Garrison. That was it. Garrison's getting taken out. Yeah. Yeah, but here we are ready to load into map number one, Raid on the Hardpoint. Who do you got eyes on for these two teams to come out hot, and how do you want them to kick off these early rotations? Well, I would love for OU Crimson to find a way to establish themselves, especially with how close this P1 is in terms of like how these guys spawn and where exactly they get put in right off the bat. OU Crimson usually has that upper hand because we do see UTD having to rotate through that garage, having to find a way over there by the vehicles and being a lot more contested and being ready to set up for P2 and making it taking advantage of that overall. 
But when it comes down to this P1 right here, OU's already finding that momentum, putting themselves onto this point and finding a way to put themselves down. And at this point, OU, they should know, you know, to get a man on, but also have a couple guys off ready for that next rotation overall. And I feel like going forward, that's where it really starts to pick up. Yeah, and they're doing it beautifully off the jump. Briggy already picking himself a two-piece in on the ring. Looking for more here, but a little bit too much for him to chew as UTD turn it the opposite direction. Even though both of these teams are sitting here at the top cut of split two, it is definitely UTD COD that is the overdog. They have yet to lose all season, and OU Crimson are here to surprise early on. Good rotation for UTT to get across. It's Envy already in, looking for the third kill on point. Not going to find it, and OU Crimson now working inside out to hold on to P2 and keep those spawns moving over to P3. Yeah, and I think they're doing a great job right now. OU Crimson, all they have to do really is just stay contesting on this point. Find a way to keep guys on it. Find a way, even if they're not gaining points, as long as the opponent is gaining points, they're already seeing an, an advantage right now. And they already have the spawns for this next point, which is going to be across the map, essentially, over there in Garage. So if they can find a way to set themselves up, already set up for that point, as you see a guy out there um, outside money overall, trying to, you know, cut off these rotations and lock these guys out on that half of the map, they could get a free P3 overall. And then as long as they can get those setups ready and get guys ready for that next P4 in basketball court, they should be sitting completely peachy going forward, even though they lost a couple points there in kitchen. Yeah, and here we go, looking to try and find that rotation across to the opposite side. Final few seconds go in favor of UTD, but OU are set up. It is going to be the last man, Ninja Cinnamon, to try and keep it held together as the rest of UTD push down through driveway. Four-man snack heading his direction. You see in his hands the QBZ, which has kind of come through as that replacement for the XM4 after it got GA'd. A lot of people are talking about whether or not it'll stay in the meta, but it is melting through right now. Mr. J. Pistachio able to find one before he is immediately traded on back and a good hold out of OU able to just hold on to a slight lead. Yeah, and that's exactly what these guys are looking for. When you know you're taking on a Titan who's going 10-0 right now, they have just a stacked roster overall. You're just trying to find every single minor victory you can look for. And overall, it, right now, sitting at just a small advantage, no matter how small it is, I mean, these guys, if they scrap up every single second past this time, there are they're still going to be at least at a tie game. So, these guys on OU need a big uh, going ahead and looking for this rotation, which we see them trying to do over on pool side, finding a way to get on this next point and establish themselves so they can establish a lead once again and try and find a way to shut down these guys at UTD because I mean, if you win against these men, even in a single map, you got something to work with overall and you know that you can carry some kind of momentum going forward. Yeah, but I think at this point, you got to point out every member of OU Crimson are sitting negative, but still holding this lead. That is all about the rotations they've been able to put together, but it might not be enough as UTT COD get a couple kills down there on the courts and retake it for themselves. Great shot there by Envy, but he's immediately traded back by Briggy, and no one gets an immediate man advantage. Cedar looking to try and find something, but gets stuck between a rock and a hard place. Knocks down, top of the stairs, goes across to OU Crimson, and they will be able to take the final few seconds of this draft time. UTD rotating back over into the center, and Cedar has himself a 1v2 if he peeks out of the doorway. Snow gonna throw in the grenade, try and hold him off. Re challenges only goes one for one, though, as Texas take control of the middle of the map. Yeah, and at this point in the game, this is where it really starts to turn up right here because overall, when you look at the P5 to P1 rotation, I mean, if you're on P5 and you're holding that down well enough, you can lock down P1 already. As you see, Pistachio is already set up there, and he has clear and cut eyes onto P5 right now with how closely connected they are and how easily they are to rotate back and forth from each other. If you can get a big enough and an influential enough lockdown on one site, you can make an easy little jog to the next site and be totally comfortable with that next one so overall if OU slips up right here and gives up UTD to get on this point and establish a huge lead right here I mean that would be totally fine by them but they need to be finding a way to either get on this P1 or take over this P5 right now and with how it's sitting overall with them already having most of the points and you're only fighting for scraps at this time you need to be going ahead and looking for that P1 getting yourselves over there and finding a way to shut these guys out to where you can get an early lead on that P1 P2 once again 
Yeah, P1 after the first rotation can really turn into a power position if you are not set up from the spawns OU Crimson have for themselves right now. You gotta give credit over to guys like Brigi for them to even be in this game over a minute on the hill. The most subjective time of anybody in the lobby right now as Ninja Cinnamon tries to sneak in, but he's gonna get spotted out, knocked down, and three quick kills for UTD Orange. That is pushing every single member of OU Crimson back into their spawns, and they just gotta think about taking control of mid and get over towards p2 because at this rate look at the three-man setup over there on ring anytime an arrow from ou crimson gets near it is turned into a skull in that same exact instant and that close close difference in score has been spread out into a 70 point lead yeah i think that's exactly where they started to slack was on that p4 with how close all those points are and how they almost connect together in a single little trail if you sit there and give up that momentum with utd found at that time you know they may have slacked on p1 through three but overall once you get to that point it almost it's a completely different half of the map it's a completely different feel as everything can just kind of carry on its own weight at that point so utd if they sat there they show that they could give up a little bit of slack there in the front end and they can come along in the later points and find ways to get a lot of points and a lot of time on those hills in that time so overall they need to sit there and establish themselves and as you said oh you need to make their way through that kitchen they should have made that early rotation through p too because the only way you were getting anywhere was making a flank somehow and even then you had three guys to deal with over there in the rear and in the middle of that play inside of kitchen snow picks himself up a seven kill streak that means he has the artillery strike now in the back pocket and when you move through garage isn't really the place you want to throw it down but you have the basketball courts just looming big with only 40 points remaining until utd can close out this entire game that skill streak is gonna be such a big difference right here i don't really know how they'll be able to hold off against it utd seem to have finally stabilized on these rotations they have extended a big lead for themselves and then um, it might not even get across to p4 unless cedar can get a good couple of kills here holding off inside a garage yeah i'm with you on that the fact is these guys need to find a way to shut down these rotations and you oh you need to be quicker to the cut because utd being at such a large score advantage right now they have plenty of breathing room overall they can sit there and get rid of a point uh, at about 20 seconds go ahead and set up for that next one because they can they can be willing to lose those points they have enough of an advantage to where if they sit there and say all right throw these guys to scraps let's get set up for this next one and you know let's win a you know 30 to 20 ratio overall in terms of this time and we're still going to win this overall but right now it's not even looking like it's going to get around to that rotation once again because i mean when you look at like the p4 maybe with this contestant they could bring something out but i think utd as we see they're already trying to set up here on basketball court allowing them to close out this game if they hold it as strong as they did last time around yeah, and I couldn't tell if Cedar picked up an artillery strike for himself holding off inside a garage. He got to a seven kill streak, but he might have been just short. Now with the final few seconds, UTD going for the final 100 meter sprint. Only 19 seconds been to left until they finish this game. Snow up inside a window is going to start knocking down members. One, two, three for himself, and that could be the end. Last man standing. It's going to be Cedar on the backside flank. He gets in on the site and is down by around 70 now for OU. There is still a chance they have the time left for themselves if they can contest if they can get a very strong rotation back over to p5 and in the final moments it seems like the guns are lighting up cedar doing his best mvp performance but it is just not gonna be enough as utd cod run in break it on the one final hill and i think that is gonna be the end of the game as they close it out seems like the final chance to rush in now for ninja cinnamon he's gonna get melted and utd cod win it 250 to 170 Four. Oh man right there at the end i thought they honestly had a chance i saw utd kind of playing there in the back playing towards kitchen setting up over towards spawn and getting ready to you know just swarm that p5 so i thought they were just going to give it to ou and just give them a little bit of a a little bit of hope to work with in these next couple of maps but the way they just stormed in and held that out in the past couple seconds i mean uh, you can't sleep on these guys at all even if they're set up you still can't think that by any chance whatsoever they're going to sit back and don't think they have a plan in mind somehow. I mean, even I was full for a second, albeit, but I mean, they even surprised me. And if I was in the shoes of OU, I'd be caught off just as much as they were. Yeah, I think OU came out very hot. They took the first 30 or so seconds on P1. 
And then it just all started to fall apart. After yeah. that point, I think they spent the entire game with all four players negative. It's impressive to get 174 points on a hard point if none of your guys ever hit positive just in general. So they had some good rotations. They got over to Hills early, but the slaying power of UTD Cod continues to come out big, and it'll be a difficult turnaround to pick up map number two and even up our map count one-to-one. Yeah, and I completely agree because, I mean, when we're speaking on search, I mean, we were talking about this earlier. They Their their ratios on search are just a, a little bit too much for your average Joe. Yeah. I mean, when you look at the likes of Catalyst, man's got a 3.43. I mean, you can put this dude in the front line. Your whole teammates, I mean, it's like when you're going into public lobbies and you're like clutch or kick. We're just going to let you run out there by yourself, see what you can do, and we'll just cover up the scraps. Mm -hmm. I mean, that kind of situation, Envy with the 2.26, I mean, everything just seems to be lining up for these guys at UTD. And, I mean, it would have been great for OU to get that strong front and allow some breathing room, allow themselves to lose that search and destroy and then possibly come back in another respawn mode. But when you already let up that first point and you're getting carried into a map where it's a completely different flow and to where you may not feel as comfortable and another team just kind of dominates when it comes to that uh, kind of flow, I mean, I just don't know how I could look out overall for these guys at this point. Oh, you Crimson are no slouches on SND. They've won that map plenty of times throughout the season, but it just doesn't compare to what UTD COD have put together. Most of UTD's SND wins are 6-0s, 6-1s. I think the best OU Crimson ever did was a 6-2. A lot of them are close at around 6-4, 6-5. They go into those late rounds, and that just goes to show me, even though OU Crimson has had an amazing first split, it is kind of that difference between the tier one school and the tier two school in the moment they are trying to break up into that upper echelon the guys that go right past the qualifiers straight into playoffs and this is the competition they need to beat they just have not been able to show that ability thus far yeah and i feel like that's really what it's going to come down to when you talk about you know the playoffs and how you want these seeds and these free week ones overall just to give your team some time to practice i mean regardless of what goes on i feel like the likes of utd with how good these guys are and how well prepared they seem thus far going forward they're going to be practicing whether or not they have a week off they're not going to take that time to relax and break back in their lawn chairs they're going to be staying on those controllers staying on the consoles making sure that they can get themselves down especially with these map rotations coming up they're going to be making sure that they're going to be just as strong in these new maps as they are on the old ones so far so these guys are going to be making sure going forward that by no means necessary, they're going to let somebody get on top of them. Meanwhile, OU Crimson, I feel like this right here is going to be a great little stepping stone for them, even if they do end up losing somehow, finding a way to find the best out of this because Moscow isn't going anywhere. So when you're facing a great team and you're facing the guys who are just establishing and dominating the competition so well in Search and Destroy, you're going to have a lot to look at when you're facing up against them, and you're going to have a lot to learn going forward, which is going to help you contend to them later on in the series when we get to those playoff brackets. Okay, and finally, as we wait to load into this one, what do you think the strategy that works out best on the Moscow SND is, especially taking into account the recent favor of the QBZ getting into things? Do you think that's really going to change how people come at it, or is it going to be a lot of the same, just hit at the top escalators and see what works? I, I, I'm going to go with the latter on this one, Morgan. Overall, I feel like these guys, they just love rushing each other so much. I feel like, especially with you're looking at these two teams, when you're looking at the higher up ends of the split, these guys all have such good gun mechanical skill, and they just want to show that off as best as possible. And especially with the lack of sniper, you don't really have too much of an advantage, and you don't have too much engagement to go off of when you're in street going for that B-bomb. So, Overall, I feel like everybody's just going to really be looking at, a, at top eskies and trying to go for that, win those gunfights, and get the bomb down, really, uh, if it's needed overall. But uh, for how it's probably going to turn out for most of these matches, I don't think it's even going to come around to that. Reminder to everyone watching, Catalyst is the guy to keep an eye on. 3.43 KD here on the Search and Destroy, and UTD Cod are going to kick things off from the defensive side. OU Crimson seems like they're going with your prediction. Rush directly over towards A, but Cedar actually makes a little bit of a play down middle and regrets it immediately, gets knocked down by Snow, and we're left in the 4-3 advantage over towards Texas. Envy looking for the next man to knock down over by the stairs, sees KDOM as eliminates KDOM. 
come and leaves now the 4v2 as the final OU members are getting swarmed by UTD. Oh, and we saw what could have been nice right there for the OU side. We saw Brady trying to get a clip over there on Envy, but he says there and isn't slacking by any means getting a trade out right there. But, I mean, from the ways of how they push that site, I don't feel like they had enough establishment up front. They never got that push around when these guys on um, UTD were over there in the middle. And they just didn't take advantage of that time given to them. We can see from that kill cam right there, they were just kind of laid out in the back, just kind of chilling, waiting for them to come into their crosshairs. But, I mean, when they see that doesn't work, they may play a little more aggressive and get that bomb down a little quicker to create some kind of pressure somewhere on the map besides just getting kills. And I think we might have cast a curse catalyst a little bit. The only guy on UTD COD that did not get a kill in that first round. But give him time. I'm sure he will heat up if his earlier performances in the season are anything to go off of. Bricky getting very aggressive right here to try and find an angle. Close angles with the 74U. He has Cedar's help to find that first headshot onto Mr. J. Pistachio. Traded back there by Catalyst. No right behind him. Cedar now needs to find a kill to turn this back. He's left in the 1v2 and getting swarmed. Low on HP. Gonna to take the challenge cannot finish it off utd cod continue to play aggressive here on the search and destroy and they've got themselves two rounds early hmm cedar was like a corner animal right there man he sat there and he scrapped together what he could but i mean these guys when you look at just look at this kill kim and look where all these gamer tags are kind of spread out amongst each other i mean when you're playing the likes of search and destroy you've got to be playing for these trades you've got to be playing for these clips overall and trying to, you know, overall as a team, you need to establish that lead and show that, I mean, individual player isn't going to exactly shine that much in search unless you were just absolutely destroying it like the likes of Snow and Envy. But when you don't have those guys allocated on your team and you don't have those kind of resources available, you got to find another way to make this work for you. So I feel like OU Crimson needs to be playing a little bit closer going forward to find a way to actually scrap this up. And we can see right there they get that opener against Catalyst, the insane man himself, to actually get some pressure here on the bomb. Cedar doing his best to keep his team in the game, sitting at three and two. Kadom and Ninja Cinnamon still at 0 for each. They need to get on the board, but at least the A site gets taken and the bomb plant gets through. Up a man in the post plant situation, or make it up two men as Brookie finds the headshot onto Mr. Pistachio. They have themselves the advantage on map. Now they just need to wait for this run out. This is the thing about teams that are the underdogs going into the search and destroy. The one thing you cannot let happen is come from behind. After you find this man advantage, you can't let it all fall apart as Snow starts melting, gets oh. himself three kills. That is a six streak for Snow, and that is three straight for UTD Cod. Man, I, I really thought you, oh, you had one right there. I mean, the way they sat there and set up for that, I mean, overall, they just seem to be like Getting that bomb down early and having that pressure, they were on the point of defense at that time. They knew exactly what these guys were lined up at. You knew they were over here on the corner. You knew they were in those kind of areas right there. But they just sat there, pressured up a little bit too much rather than, you know, preparing to set up those defenses. It almost feels like they were getting cocky and trying to play for those picks because they said, okay, we got the bomb down. Yeah, we can accomplish one thing, but... You know, be ready for the next instead of charging into a head first. And I feel like that's where they made that slip up there. And that's where UTD, you do not want to, once again, think they're going to be slacking on you by any means necessary. At the moment, it kind of feels like Kadom, Ninja Cinnamon, if you have the chance to win a round by just hiding in a corner, you might want to take that chance because the challenges have not been working. 0-3 oh, for each as Briggy and Cedar do their best with even KDs. Eyes go over to Catalyst in a 1v3 kind of pinched in between the OU members. He's going to go down again. Very rough game for who we thought would be the best search player here on Dallas's squad, but everyone else more than making up for it. And now Snow left in this one versus three. What he needs right now is just find one pick. It does not matter if you win this, but so close. Six streak, or actually, can did the uh, streaks reset even though he didn't die? Does that still? Okay, it's just the glitch. I wanted to make sure. As uh, he is about one kill away, if my mental math is correct, from getting that first artillery strike. Depending on if he got a few defuses earlier, he may even be able to get in on that cruise missile as well. And you see he knows it. Not going to rush forward. It's like a round out of CSGO as he saves the life and saves that kill streak. Yeah, and I'm really liking what I'm seeing from these guys right here. I mean, it's just the mental awareness to know that, hey, I need to sit back and not do this and just risk it by any means necessary. I need to play it safe. And we do see him possibly going for here right at the end. Not able to get anything, though. It's looking like... 
Oh, oh my god! No, that is not going to be good. I mean, oh, here man. we got to at least uh, silver lining. Round goes over to OU Crimson. Good yep. job to the Sooners as they manage to pick one up. Very good kills to lead it off there by K Dom. But why are you pushing there at the end? I know oh, that you sad. want to knock him down. He almost has the streak, but he is gonna be in the back of library and holding that angle. Yeah, and especially even when you look at it, I mean, this round overall, oh, you, they were playing it finally how they should have in the bomb the round prior. They got it down. They just need to play defense. And these guys, it once again shows a testament to where they just want to get these kills and they have to be finally realizing their challenge that they're put up against and needing to slow things down in order to get themselves an upper hand. And they can do that for the whole round, but they have that just itching sensation to run out there and they do at the end. And when you really break it down, I mean, Snow, he could have gotten that he could have gotten that streak this round right here and then been almost necessarily forced to use it next round instead of getting it last round and being able to use it this round. So, I mean, when you really break it down, I mean, there's always a better play that could have happened there. I feel like OU just needs to slow it down overall. And now Snow going to have the cruise missile as well. The eight kill streak through four rounds. Bree does what he can, but double challenged right there. Going to get knocked and we're left in the 3v1. Everything onto K Dom. Doesn't even get the ADS up in time. UTD back to form as they go up 4 1. I really like the start of that by OU Crimson. They got the plant down over by B without losing a single life, but it's a very difficult post plant inside that building. You can get pinched down on easily and we saw exactly that come out of Dallas. They played it beautifully, got it all back, and now have the momentum in their side again. What do OU Crimson need to change to just start taking control of this game and have a chance to even up the map count? I think overall they need to be throwing a lot more curveballs in the way of UTD. They need to be going for that B side a little bit more, finding ways to establish themselves and looking for a little bit different of a setup when it comes down to it. Because you saw that I mean, K-Dom, he was left in a situation where he was all by himself and it felt like a lone wolf. Even when it came down to Brady holding it down there inside the apartments, he had no backup there whatsoever. He would have had to go in alone to sit there and, you know, fight off these three UTD guys who were sitting there just defusing the bomb with what felt like free time. So what they need to do is find ways to where they can look over each other's shoulders, assist themselves, and find a way to just get these trades out instead of just lone wolfing a lot of these engagements. And again, as the Lone Wolf continues, they find themselves falling. UTD going to get into another three versus one, and KDOM on the wrong end of it for two straight rounds. Trying to play from the middle of the map. Got information there onto Snow, but the information went both ways. UTD able to finish off a pinch, and now you have two score streaks to pick up one round. The one thing that you can kind of take as a bright side for OU Crimson is you so rarely get streaks on Search and Destroy that maybe they aren't used to the best if they don't find kills. That's at least something. But I would definitely recommend that Brigie and his squad stay inside as long as possible because Snow is going to be itching to send those out. 10 and 0 for the man looking to finish pitching a perfect game for himself. Yeah, and that's exactly what these guys are looking for. When you sit there and establish yourself so hard in hard point, shut these guys out right there in the middle towards the end and not really let them have too much to work with overall. And then you come in storming into Moscow and just showing these guys up when it comes around. We see Envy just shutting a man down right there, getting another one. I mean, that's just demoralizing overall. And when it comes to this control, if you're already showing you're winning every single gunfight, I mean, going forward, when that's what control really comes down to, having to win on those points and not only just hold time, but make sure that you can get those kills on the point and utilize your team's lives and not run out by any circumstance. I mean, that's what control is all about. And I feel like at this point in time, OU Crimson's probably shivering in their boots because, I mean, unless you sat there and face these guys in two rounds a row like that and get showed out, it's, it's not pretty. 11-0. Snow went 11-0 on the search. Was able to get one pick with that cruise missile in the end. And on search and destroy, that's all score streaks are for. You get yeah. one kill, it changes the entire round. Didn't even have to use the artillery strike. And so 
down 2-0 become OU Crimson heading into this control back on raid. This is definitely going to challenge their gun skills. Can they come up and meet some of these hot hands that UTD Cod have for themselves? I do not know. We haven't seen it thus far, but I like to always think there's a chance of the comeback. I like to always say a reverse sweep is still on. They're not out of this one yet. Who is it going to have to be for OU Crimson? Who's going to have to be that MVP coming through big? <laughs> I mean, I don't want to be this guy, but I'm going to say it's going to need to be everybody. <laughs> I mean, when you can't sit there, I mean, Cedar obviously is doing a great job holding it up, going neutral in most of these matches so far, and really just holding himself. But, I mean, in control, there's no way you can really be a standout solo player when it comes around to that. You have to have multiple guys on this point in order for it to cap quicker. You have to sit there and get those trades out, and you can't sit there and sacrifice to go back and forth. Meanwhile, your teammates are just giving you less lives to work with. I mean, overall, there's way too much to deal with right here. And they just got to find a way to come together, possibly during this break we got coming up to, you know, find a way to sit there and say, all right, let's come up with something because this ain't going to work. And this is, we're going to be going home pretty quick tonight if we don't find a way to get things together. We will see if they can put everything together. But before that, we will send it over to a quick break. Stick around as we look to come back here. Map three of our first game back very shortly. And we are back, ready to load into map number three here in the matchup between UTD, Cod Orange, and OU Crimson. It's going to be on raid, and we were speaking before the break how this will be a Herculean effort for OU. They have a big hill to climb, and that is still an understatement, and everyone's going to need to come out big right now. I'll kind of flip the question I gave you to start, though. Who's the weak link on UTD's side? Who do you think they might have to challenge to try and get through, maybe find a guy to target and get a couple kills, get a little early on that life advantage? Ah, I don't like the shoes you're putting me in right now, man. <laughs> yeah, I just um, asked the tough oh, questions. I don't have to answer them. Especially, oh, God. Okay. All right. Nobody hate me. Um, Right now, I'm going to say K-Dom. I know he's their captain, but I feel like just not only from a player point of view, but also from a captain perspective, if they show out and they finally get a momentum to flip the tables right here, it shows him. I mean, he's the one who's in a role to say, all right, boys, let's round it up right here. Let's rally. Let's get together. Let's start finding some ways to counter these guys. What are you seeing, Cinnamon? What are you seeing, Briggy? What are you see like, you know, getting all this information together, compiling it and saying, okay, Let's utilize this. We Let's find a way to find any kind of small victories we can besides getting a little point advantage or a single round and search and destroy and finally get a map on the board to sit there and show that we are here and going forward, we're not going to get shut out by any means. So I feel like it's totally on him overall. And, and if they do, I mean, just, just I'm going to flip the tables and, you know, give all the props to him. I think personally... I got to call out Jay Pistachio purely because I sometimes worry he may still be in the DMs once the map gets loaded in. That's all. If he if he gets off Twitter, if he gets on the sticks, he has been doing amazing all day. He's been kind of filling that second gunner spot right underneath Snow. But top to bottom, everyone on the side of UTD Cod have had very good games. You can see they came in serious. They want to cement themselves as one of the top two teams. They are probably looking to take on Ottawa, they were in opposite divisions and split one. So when that matchup comes down, it'll be for the top of the top cut. And so to make yourself really come through as one of these best teams to go further and further up the top 25, that's the chance they have been given here at the start of split two, and they are taking it head on. Yeah, and I'm completely with you. When it comes around to this, we saw that, especially the map where they did have that small victory, it was on raid. It was during that point where they were on P1. I mean, that just may play into their favor. It is, I mean, that site is one of the sites for control as well. So if they can find a way to utilize that same exact momentum and that same kind of, you know, infiltration they maintain when it came around to hard point and utilize it in this time around, if UTD hasn't found a way to adjust around it yet, they can fully actually win these offensive rounds. As we know, those are the hardest ones to come by when it comes to control. So they can find a way to flip the tables and get some kind of momentum going right there. I mean, I feel like this is completely viable and totally possible for them. 
I completely agree. And it's really going to come down to who's better at their rotations between the two sites. You see a lot of the times, if someone dominates a raid control, it is because from the attacking side, they make a hit on A. And then as soon as someone dies, they start hitting over by B. And if the defense gets their feet crossed up, if they are too slow on the rotations, they will slowly and surely slip away those tabs of control and just never really be in a good position to defend again. So these initial breaks on the attacking side, they're going to be massive. I don't expect either team to be able to fully lock down a site from the first gunfight, but it's how well you switch back and forth between the sites that has really become the way to attack Raid here in Cold War. And I completely agree, especially when you're playing the likes of Raid. I preach it nonstop is that when you're on attack, I feel like as defense heavy as a lot of these control maps are, every single one of them on that note, overall, you feel like you should have an advantage when it comes to offense because defense has two sites to hold. They have to allocate their men correctly in order to win those gunfights and keep control and momentum on these sites. But when you're actually really consider, when you really break it down, they don't know who to allocate there. So if they do a 2-2 split and you get four guys over on A side and switch it to B, uh, it's how hey, Mick, hard. Uh, Mick, A's already captured. Uh, so... Uh... UTD yeah. already proven us wrong as they go in, they lock down A, and they cap it in one quick go. Yeah, and just overall, that shows just right in my point overall that the fact is when you can find a way, I mean, these guys doing it a little bit differently. They did just win in gunfights, so, I mean, you, you don't really have to play those mind games. But when you can sit there and switch it back and forth so much and keep the defenders on their toes where they're constantly putting a four stack or a three stack on the wrong side, that's just great. But, I mean... <laughs> As you mentioned, it's not looking like UTD even needs that. Yeah, and Snow is on a 14 streak, including the last map. Still yet to die here on map number three. Gonna add another one. How about oh my two God. for Snow? What was that at the end? How did he pick up both of those kills? And UTD Orange with an absolute thrashing in the first round from top to bottom. I mean, shout out to Ninja Cinnamon picking up the play of the game on the QBZ, but Snow is coming through as the MVP candidate 16 straight kills between maps without dying they gotta they got find a way to play around this man right here i know they can't exactly lock down players overall as ou but i mean these guys that's exactly what they gotta do right now because i mean you let snow get these streaks especially on defense i mean a utd can allocate their whole guys to one side let you storm the other half of the field throw down an artillery strike and that's three kills right there. that's a team wipe so I mean, these guys got to do it, and overall, we see, you know, Envy right now just popping off and holding down the whole side, it looks like, by himself. Snow finally goes down, but it's not enough. Seven and one to kick things off. That'll be an artillery strike in the back pocket. As Cedar doesn't finish off the hip fire. He thought he got the kill, looked away from it, and Catalyst proved him wrong. Another one goes down, and it is an early six life advantage over to UTD Cod. At least, though, from the attacking side, OU Crimson can't be taken out that fast. They always have a chance to get back into the game if they get one good rotation, if they get one good hold, but a little bit of extra time on the clock. The thing is, you gotta worry about this man snow playing at an absolute different level right now only found the one kill but the damage is being done catalyst as well hit a seven streak that should be two different artillery strikes on utd's side yeah i'm not looking liking the way this looks right now for ou i mean these guys they have to find a way not even to get on point but they just gotta look to get out of spawns right now i mean you got you their ways and slithering themselves into those spawns finding ways to lock it down even if they're not getting those kills up front and showing their faces just yet they're establishing themselves around the map pushing up fairly quickly playing that push of war instead of that tug of war finding ways to create more influence throughout the map and leaving you less to work with and when you got pistachio being a one-man army over there on a side and there goes that caster's curse again but overall i mean when you got these guys just doing so well and giving you so little time to work with because you can't play the game necessarily I mean, at that point, uh, there's not much you can do. Turns out, off of the extra score he got, actually had a cruise missile to throw down. It didn't even affect the round, just felt like you're so rich, why not use it? The cruise missile hits the ground. Catalyst, the one picking up the play of the game. I was worried there for a second when we got eyes on Pistachio at the end of the round. He looked like he was hunting an assassination, but decided to respect the man, get the gun kill instead. 
2-0 goes the round count. 2-0 is the map count. Here it is. Will it be the double clean sweep coming out of this map? Or can OU Crimson get back onto the scoreboard? It's going to be a tough one after how quickly round one was ended. Yeah, and I feel like they're going to follow suit this time around. They're just going to go straight for A once again because they knew they won it last time and didn't really have too much to work with and just had to storm B as a whole. So if they sit there and maintain this whole, the same thing, I mean, if it's just by gunfights and not rotations, they can feel purely confident enough to rush in on that, win that, and find a way to get themselves on point. But at this time, I mean, OU looked like they actually made a pretty fair stand right there, which actually forced UTD to find a way to rotate and take this a little differently this time around. Yeah, you see the immediately off of the death rotated back over to the B site, which makes me think they just never died in the first round by A. They never had a reason to cross map. Now they're back over to the bottom side of the map around ring. That is a 3v1. Okay, Dom goes down, meaning no one left on the defense, and that is just going to be defaulted over. Brigand does get spotted out by Catalyst, taken down as he tries to get up towards window. The last line of defense goes down for OU Crimson. Now they have to stand strong by B. You have to watch out for a spawn trap coming through from UTD Cot. Last time they rotated all the way through the left side. Now going to instead go through the middle. And Kadom gets a big double kill to just find a little bit of breathing room for the Sooners. Yeah, and that's exactly what these guys are looking for right now. Because, when I mean, they found a way to finally get the A point once again. And when you sit there and get locked down now, we saw how well they established themselves on Ray when it came to that P2 overall and finding ways to constantly contest that. I mean, you can do that same thing. Meanwhile, if you got guys on that B site, that's how you win the game right there is finding control all around the site as well as just having a single man on it. So if they can maintain that picking off Briggy and Cedar right here and make that push up towards that B site, this is going to look like a done one for the guys. Yeah, coming through right here, right now. UTD Cod trying to find the final pushes. Envy works around inside a bar. Gonna have Cedar across the way. See if he challenges, but no. Very good Semtex by Cedar. Follows it up with the kill onto Snow as he continues to hold strong. Four life differential, but with Spriggy coming around the backside, had a chance until Catalyst throws down a cruise missile of his own. Finds that kill on the flanking member of OU Crimson and opens up the site once more. Inside of Window is where the rest of the Sooners try and make a play from, but that is no real just presence in on the B site and you're gonna see it go across Envy challenging trying to finish it off right now are UTD Cod but Cinnamon's big Semtex slows it down once more see if they can find this hold as the kills continue to go in favor of Orange last stand right here Kadom around the corner has to get outside of the courts has to make something happen he gets found he gets knocked down you hmm. UTD clean it up, and they win both maps 3-3-0 and the game 3-0 to take down the Sooners. Oh, man. Right there at the end, I felt kind of bad. I mean, when you're in the sitting the likes of Briggy and when you're sitting the likes of Cedar right there, just overall trying to find ways to just spread out. When your two teammates die and you're facing these guys and you sit there and you're getting 2 0 so far, I mean, and you're slacking those lives, you know darn well they're going to leave that point to manhunt you at that point. Just say, who needs the hill? We got streaks. We're getting kills. Let's just get the, let's just finish it out the same way we've been winning the game so far. So overall, I mean, just a, such a strong showing from these guys to just sat there and cap a point so quickly, not even allocating men around it, just getting the full stack on there, maximizing that time and how quick the progress can come down and just closing out each side just quick as that and utilizing that next time roundabout to sit there and say, now we can slow down. Now we have to pressure around because they're not, they only have one place to look towards. I mean, it was just a great play by UTD overall. One of the more aggressive offensive strategies I've seen on Raid. They got onto those points and they held it there on A and then just worked their way back across towards poolside. Biggest of shout outs go to Snow and Jay Pistachio. Both of them really locked down, but is there any question who the MVP of this game is? Snow, 11 and 0 on the search and destroy, 5 and 0. Actually, no, 7 and 0 to kick off Map yeah. 3 as well. That is 8. 18 straight kills, just domination from top yeah. to bottom. And Goodness, he is making man. a play for just one of the best players in the league if you keep putting together performances like that. Yeah, and, I, you know, I would love to see this guy right here, which I've mentioned at times. I don't know if he come around, but, like, maybe a Pro Bowl, kind of where we get the best players from each team. I, I want to see I want to see it. Snow melting the best of the best. I maybe 1v1 tournament. Every get team like, put together your best dude. 
Just he's like the best. Just like getting revenge for Olaf, my man. He, he's I'm sure they're long distance cousins or something. He's like, you guys want to melt him? Well, I'll melt you, darn it. I'll find a way to get my vengeance for my man because he's out here just killing left and right, just clipping it, almost seeming like a, a registered hitman at this point. It was very impressive to watch. But that's going to bring our first game to an end, but we still have plenty more action waiting. Two more games, the middle one of which is going to head over to Texas State versus Oklahoma State. We have our buddies on the mic. Actually, it is not on the live sheet. Let me see if I can double check. Yeah, We're going to be heading over crazy. to Seymour and Cruz and Spaz for that second game. So make sure you stick around. That is a deadly duo in the booth. But that'll bring our first match to an end. Thank you for joining me, Mick. Everyone, thank you for yes, watching. Sir. And stick around for more College Cod.